Uh, hey, I'm Jamie, this is my van Sunny, and uh, we live here in Denver, Colorado. This video is sponsored by Branch Basics. Most people don't realize how harmful cleaning products can be to their health. The EPA says that indoor air quality is one of the top threats to our health and that air quality can be over 500 times more polluted inside than outside and cleaning products contribute to that. That's why Branch Basics has made safe certified fragrance free alternatives that are biodegradable and eco-friendly and they clean everything from your dishes to the floors, they even clean your laundry and they'll also clean yourself. So click the link in the description and use code FLOOR for 15% off all starter kits except for the trial kit and enjoy today's video. Honestly, it was just like a dream of mine that like I had been seeing things on Instagram, seeing things on TV. I always just wanted to travel around and I love camping and I figured just having like kind of a mobile home with more of the comforts and everything would just like have me go out there and do it more. I researched a lot on like vehicles and everything like that and this was a second one I just like booked a last minute appointment for, fell in love with it. I mean, the space was great. It's tall, huge. So then that was it, signed, sealed and delivered. The build process was a lot of learning, a lot of YouTube, a lot of asking questions to people and trial and error. I sat down, I built floor plans, I uh, drew out things and then had them completely like ripped apart and redone. I mean, it sounded great to like pre-plan and everything like that, but it was really just like building one thing and then getting in the van and then just like trying it out. Like I would stand next to, you know, the wall and be like this is how high I want the counter and then this is how high I want the bench and you know just kind of do a wall sit and try to figure out like what the best like you know bench thing would be or where the table would come out and you know just to make sure that I had enough space with uh, normal house building versus van building the sizes are completely different I didn't think that I would be living in it full time but with travel nursing and COVID kind of just like went all over to work contracts and everything like that and having this to just like live in the parking lot and have a 30 second commute was a definitely a bonus I think I spent about 25K in total. Sunny is a uh, 2007 Dodge Sprinter. It was white, uh, kind of a uh, little creepy looking at times with uh, some faded logos and construction stuff on the outside. So I ended up uh, taking it in and getting painted. It is a rear wheel drive and not four wheel drive, which a lot of people think is a huge issue. We travel a ton in the snow and uh, I actually have chains uh, for the back two tires and that works perfectly fine. Back here is like the garage portion of it. Do a lot of mountain biking. So got one of these um, to fit both bikes. I got this one with the 45 degrees so that I could still open the back doors. They don't open like terrible amount, but um, just enough to get into the back for everything. I have two uh, Battleborn batteries. They're lithium ion, so I really don't have to do much maintenance or anything for them. And then we have shoes, stuff like that, the chains. In the middle, we have wood storage and then just lights, uh, towels, things like that. And on this side is the uh, water jugs, extra stove if we need it, chairs, the awning, and then solar controller and everything kind of comes off of here. I'm able to store a snowboard, a split board, a set of skis, two sets of poles, all just like on the back doors flat. I just kind of open up those back doors and everything's right there. These like little rubber pegs from Amazon. I think they're like eight bucks or something like that for a set. Super easy to install. I mean, I can move them around. Like say I buy a bigger board or something's like fatter ski or like whatever. You can adjust them so that we can accommodate like larger things. I'll slide the board in, you put the strap on and then just tie it tight to the back wall so that it doesn't shift around while driving. So I put the ladder here on the side. It's technically not for side mounting, but I did add a bunch of like brackets on the inside and then just like kind of sealed it to the outside. And then I have two 175 watt solar panels on the roof. I actually built this kind of upside down carriage bolt system that went into the roof rack track. And then I used like 10 or 12 solar mounts, um, which they say like four per panel. So <laughs> there's a lot, um, but it ended up working out great. And then I sealed them all in. Um, just with silicone. We actually get ready for skiing up here. We turn on the heat, heat rises up, and we actually store ski boots and uh, a lot of the equipment up here on the shelf that I built. Um, it helps kind of warm up the boots and everything like that. And then got the shovel up here, track pads, everything to work on getting the van kind of like shoveled out from outside. All right, so we'll get you back here. So right now it's summer and there's tons of bugs. Custom bug screens are like four or $500. I got this one off of Amazon for like a double door for like 80 bucks. And then I was able to kind of rip all the seams out from the side and then cut it to fit. The entire thing is lined in Velcro. So in the winter, I can just pull it down and it's super easy to use. So I'll take you on in. 
starting over here, this is uh, one of my favorite uh, features about the van. Cubic mini stove from a company out in Canada. They make stove for tiny homes, but they ended up making a smaller model uh, known as the Cub um, for smaller spaces like this. Um, it's 10 by 10 inches. It heats like a 200 square foot space. And it uses these little five by five inch logs that I cut off of regular wood. We have an ax mounted right on the outside here. We try to keep an extra storage of wood here. This is real brick. It's quarter inch. I actually use thin set and just some regular mortar and everything like that to get these stuck on the wall there. So far, no issues with it bouncing around and everything like that. I haven't noticed any cracks or anything like that, but I keep an eye on it constantly just to make sure. So I did uh, spend a little bit more upfront to insulate it. So I used Havelock wool. It's mold resistant, it's uh, flame resistant. And uh, with the changing temperatures and cooking in here and creating condensation and everything that like that, that was my biggest worry was uh, having something that in here that would create mold or anything behind the walls I couldn't see. I really, really wanted a sliding barn door in here, as impractical as it may sound. So I built it out of a one by four common board and then painted it. Sliding system is uh, from Amazon. It comes in two parts, uh, so I was actually only able to use half, um, which was kind of cool because the half made it perfect that it just like opened right in this doorway that was already made in the van. And then I have two kind of latches. This one is for the inside, and then I have one small one on this side and I'm able to open it up, uh, you know, all the way to walk kind of through here um, to get to the front. So kitchen, this is my actual pride and joy because I redid the entire thing. This is a Greystone three burner stove oven, upgraded from a camp stove oven that I had before. I actually do uh, use the oven pretty often, which I know a lot of people are like, oh, wouldn't you only need a stove top and a van? And actually I use the oven pretty often for cooking. Um, and then just having the three burners and a wider um, cooking space was important to me because I cook a lot on the road. This was the original counter that I had in the old one and because I wanted it to come out further. Put some slate tile back here just to kind of make it a little bit larger. Decision not to have a sink in here, uh, mainly just because uh, we're constantly in cold temperatures, um, sometimes negative temperatures. So um, just like dealing with like lines freezing and pipes cracking, things like that, I just really didn't want to. Um, so we are actually fine with just like two seven gallon water jugs um, in the back. Um, they tend not to freeze or anything like that. And then for dishes and everything, we do have uh, dish buckets that we can use the water in to clean clean everything, but uh, most of the time uh, we actually just use cast irons, which we wipe clean, um, and then um, everything else is kind of non-stick. With Sea to Summit, everything kind of uh, collapses down. I actually have four pots, several kettles, and a bunch of mugs and stuff in there, but everything is silicone and collapses down, so I'm able to just fit it in this tiny space. Then a five gallon propane tank down there, pots and pans and things. And actually, I haven't done it quite yet, but we cook a lot with a Dutch oven. Um, it's a large cast iron and everything like that from Lodge. Um, so we're gonna put that in our, the rest of our cast irons up here so that we can just grab it and go outside and cook and everything like that over the fire, so. The doors, um, they were a labor of love for sure. Um, they're actually reclaimed barn wood and they're all cut individually um, and then glued onto these uh, panels so that they give it that like old uh, wood look and then they're all stained and sealed. It ended up being perfect for the space and the look that I was going for. And then if you pull this out, I got a full Dometic fridge freezer. It's nice having two chambers um, and I'm able to change the temperature on here of both of them. And then above it, um, for the two seating areas here, have the kitchen table. All of this is the same live edge maple. And I really wanted to keep the second bench to be able to have two people sit in here. Um, so in order to do that and then also have more counter space, if I grab this from down here, I'm able to have like a more extended piece of counter. And then I can open everything down here. We just keep some extra blankets, um, a jackery for uh, emergency power and everything like that down here. And then when not in use, these just clip like that. And this comes down and becomes the back of the chair. We have a cassette toilet in here, goes into this uh, three gallon tank down here at the bottom. It has a flusher, everything like that. We put antifreeze in there so nothing freezes and makes it difficult to uh, remove. I found this like eco-friendly one so that it doesn't, you know, you don't have to worry about it polluting anything. And then I put that in there. And then uh, also like I have these like kind of tablets that kind of, you know, eat up the odor and everything. We've never had an issue with smell or anything like that, which is really nice. 
I didn't skimp on the mattress. It's a 10 inch memory foam mattress, which is super comfortable. It's full size. Um, did do a little modification just to, you know, have it fit in this area horizontally, just so I could save more space. Um, and for me, I'm 5'7", so that's uh, perfect. It's actually like a, I think 5'8", um, amount of space. We do have a considerable amount of space in between the bed and the storage, um, which is why we can put the skis and everything like that and then not worry. And then um, if it's snowing and the snow is kind of blowing in when we open the doors and everything like that, we can just unclip those and then the canvas will come down so it blocks the uh, bedding area from any weather. We are able to fit everything we need up here. Then we have like magnetic uh, hooks and stuff like that. We just hang jackets and everything on those. Don't get frustrated with the small things, I think is the biggest lesson that I've learned. Things are gonna break, things are gonna need to be rebuilt. I'm gonna need to have some tools along the way, like things are gonna chip, scuff, crack, whatever. I mean, if you get super frustrated and overwhelmed by that kind of stuff, then, you know, this whole process and everything about this kind of life is, it gets really difficult. Um, you have to be super flexible and, um, you know, just ready to kind of take on anything. But I guess that's kind of why you get into it in the first place. I think that, the, you know, looking at it from like a whole perspective and everything being finished and at that final step where I am right now, where I'm just kind of like traveling around and having fun, people look at it and they're like, oh man, I couldn't imagine like building something like that. But I mean, you can do it. Maybe it might just take a little bit longer, but honestly, it's like totally worth it. The best thing that ever happened was was me just like, you know, going for it. And I mean, sure it was scary, like putting down that money on the van and everything like that. But honestly, it was the best decision I've ever made. And, um, you know, not doing it would have been way worse. I mean, the way that we started was a cooler, a mattress on the ground and, uh, you know, a Coleman camp stove. And that was it, you know, so it wasn't anything frilly or nice or whatever. And I was still building on the road and everything. But I mean, there's a lot that you can do with battery power tools and, you know, you can still travel and do fun things. I mean, all you need is just the shell and uh, just to stay dry. So, uh, you know, go for it and do it and, you know, take the little bits as you go along.